Well, hey, everybody, thanks for stopping back into the Red Barn. And I think you figured it out by now. It really wouldn't be a day at the Red Barn if we weren't redoing something. And in this episode, it's the 914 Ferrari intake manifold. So after all that work, getting this manifold looking like this with the throttle bodies positioned and all that good stuff, why am I talking about redoing something? Well, as it turns out, uh, with the throttle bodies here, I end up almost for sure with an airbox back in this area, you know, or a U-turn and tubes of their places, and I just didn't want to do that. So what's happened is, after talking to some smart folks who know a bit about these engines, it turns out that I can run the throttle bodies in a different location. That location being out the side of the plenum, like here. Here's an example of what... Uh, what I'm probably going to get close to. Uh, so what that's going to do is it's going to mean that I end up with an air box in this area, right under the fresh air intake, cold air intake. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about, well, I'm still going to have to have the pop up and things. But the other thing that's going to happen is this intake manifold can be turned 180 degrees. And you wouldn't know by looking, and don't worry about me scratching this because it's obviously already going to need to be refinished anyway with all the repair work we've done on it. But if you look at how lovely that front area is with that angle on it, what I think is going to happen is we're going to end up putting the same kind of angle here and then throttle bodies right here and doing a 180 with the whole manifold and so we'll have a very pretty factory finished look in this section of the car and also uh it'll be less of a bulge it also may be that with that angle here i'll barely have a little teeny bump in the hood and this will be just it'll be less dramatic but still pretty cool looking having the plenums poking out the top of the car this, by the way, fits under the stock trunk, so I wouldn't have to do anything, and the, and the trunk lid fits with about, you know, I don't know, about an inch of clearance. But what would be interesting is this is an air oil separator, and I don't know how important it is that it's this shape and these dimensions, because if this could be lowered a little bit, the targa roof could then be made to fit back in here, you know, and stow, which would be... That would be just a neat feature to say, yeah, there's a Ferrari drivetrain in this thing, but you can still stow the Targa roof in its original position. Just kind of a neat thing to be able to do. It's not a showstopper if that's too much work or isn't a great idea, but that remains to be seen. Really what has to happen is we've got to get a setup for this intake manifold where the airbox setup uh, can work with as much storage space as I want to have. So the first thing that's going to happen is these turndowns have to get taken off. And for any interested parties, this is what this intake manifold looks like without the plenums on it. And here you can see what Ferrari was up to in terms of trying to increase the runner length to give it a low RPM torque. At low RPM, these butterflies, which are the direct intake runner tubes into the cylinders, are closed. And what you can see is over here, there's an, a tube that's open all the time, no butterfly in it, right? And it runs all the way across and it comes in just below the butterfly in each of these tubes, which is why you're seeing 16 of these openings. So at low RPM, this valve is closed and the intake track is the distance from here all the way to there on each of the cylinders and then at about 5500 rpm these valves open and that's what all this magical stuff is down here that's a vacuum operated solenoid and that's what some of these all these vacuum ports um, are doing and at 5500 rpm or so these valves open and cut the intake track basically in half and you've got a straight shot into the cylinders through there and it's a pretty simple uh 
on off solenoid. It's not like it's servo motored or anything. So it just opens. Anyway, so there you go. That's what's going on underneath there. Complicated. And by the way, this thing weighs a ton. This, I don't know how much this whole plenum or this whole intake manifold weighs, but that is not lightweight, which is a little surprising considering how high up it is on the motor. Obviously it works for Ferrari, but uh, I have to say I was surprised the first time I hefted one of those things. It weighs a bunch. All right, so the bandsaw made quick work of removing the, uh, the turndowns, and now the intake manifold's been flipped 180 degrees, and that's necessary because, as you can see, the shapes of the fronts of these plenums are slightly different. So uh, you can't just flip the plenum. The whole thing's got to go 180, which it does, and it still bolts on to the same bolt pattern. So what that gets us is this. Uh, plenty of clearance here. Now, note these are going to have to get trimmed back, and they will, so that really there'll be, gosh, there'll be like an inch of clearance on this close one. Plenty of clearance for that. The throttle bodies are now, still got to work this out. Uh, there's a boss right here. So these either kind of go here between those two bolt points, here between those two bolt points, or they go up a bit high. Uh, which is not horrible, uh, and they get centered in the in the plenum, and then these will get trimmed back. You can kind of see you're playing around with shape. These will get trimmed back, and this this bump will just take it into the top part of this, so there'll be a little bit of a high spot, uh, or a little bit of a bump up there. But there is the way that that's going to fit. And as I mentioned, what's great about that is complete trunk space, uh, air boxes can be in here right under a fresh air intake or there's a possibility I may go right through that wall and like I've outlined on the LS car put a vent here in the side of the car and have the fresh air intake run in that way that might be kind of cool so some options anyway I like the options okay this is just temporarily locked into place with a couple of bolts but I got the engine lid back on to start to get a, a true picture of what's going on here and this had to be cut way down because the turndown bumps here are still on the plenums and they are interfering with the front return component of this engine lid. So just to get it to set on there, I had to cut that all up and now it doesn't, you know, it's just a complete noodle. But that's okay. This was a practice thing just to get fitment anyway. But what you can see now is with the ramps back here, this is going to end up needing to be cut almost all the way up into this area. And so this is, I'm going to have to come up with a reinforcement to make this, you know, hold its shape. But this will also be connected back around here. Uh, and the trunk's going to be notched. It looks like that's going to be the best way to go. But what's also coming up here is there's not enough clearance between the engine lid and... I don't know. The throttle bodies are going to interfere with this because I want them in the middle of the plenum. Uh, and that means they're going to have to sit a tick higher because there's a there's a, a fastener, threaded fastener uh, bung. You can see one here. There's one right where I want the throttle body to go, which means it's got to be sticking up a little bit above that. And that means this is probably going to have to have some kind of bump up, at least, you know, and then a grill covering it. I think I want to have this ventilated. These will probably remain grilled, and I might go the full 914 GT, you know, grill this whole area, but that remains to be seen. There's also the outside chance that there could be two separate engine lids, you know, and this would just be, you know, finished as part of the firewall and, and look good, and then this would this side could open separately from that side. It, it, there's a bunch of things to try to figure out here, but most importantly is if there's not going to be a bump, the only other option is to take about an inch out of these runners which is a, a whole other big, huge project. And it lessens how dramatic this looks. You know, there's all kinds of impacts to doing that stuff. So I think I want to try this first and see how that goes. Uh, but there it is. Uh, engine lid in place. And, and it really changes the look of things. This will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. You can see that this is going to sit approximately here. And, you know, this will just transition into the top of this. There's a little ramp here that we can probably pick up. Um, so it'll fill up the engine bay. And you can see where that puts the air box. I don't know if I'm going to run these factory bellows. I don't have to. Um, 
They're kind of cool looking. And these are going to be shorter, obviously, by the time this actually gets put on here. It's going to be, you know, in this in this range. So I've got plenty of room for an airbox. Um, but yeah, it'll be a lot different looking than it was, much like that Enzo picture. And I think it's going to work great. And it preserves all this trunk space. So lots to work out still, but I think we're heading in a direction. And there it is with the deck lid, trunk lid, kind of in position. You can see where the interference is happening. Yep. Uh, and you can see it's going to need to come forward, I don't know, inch and a half or so, which is fine. That's part of the joy of the bulge. Yeah. And what we've done here is just laid some tape on and done a quick tracing of where, approximately where, with this deck lid pulled all the way forward, where the edge of the intake plenum sits. And then this is just a, a rough hack of how much clearance might be needed. Uh, the motor does move up and down because of those soft rubber mounts, uh, soft engine mounts. So that's gonna need to be taken into account, but you can see kind of where we're headed. And then with the deck lid off, and then, and then still TBD is gonna be how this deck lid opens. I may put the factory hinges back on and just kind of see how it feels to have the traditional trunk opening. You know, on the LS cars you can see, and as you know, you know, the deck lid opens backwards. So you have a complete view, at least from the sides, into everything. So there's still some work to do, but this gives you an idea of how different the motor now is gonna look with the throttle bodies coming out the side. The good news is I bought myself a whole bunch of room here because remember, uh, and I may try to hide them in different places, but I still have the radiator overflow to deal with depending upon how I choose to actuate the intake valving. That's uh, a vacuum accumulator tank and I have the factory 360 accumulator tank that has to be mounted somewhere if I go that way. Obviously there's gonna be oil lines and vacuum lines and breather lines and all that other stuff. But what that does now is it gives me everything I wanted back here in terms of room for a, a trunk. So I've got a boatload of storage, relatively speaking. And while I certainly think this isn't as dramatic as having those throttle bodies poking straight backwards, I think it looks pretty cool. Oh, and the other thing that happened was I had a nice conversation with uh, the guys at EAG and we talked through uh, the custom cable stuff and they just said, sure, get us the dimensions and we'll have those knocked out for you in a little bit. So good progress on that, good progress on the intake manifold and I'm just calling it all a success. Yep, lots still to figure out, but when is it not the case around here at the Red Barn? But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that episode and y'all take care. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.